Hello, John. Hello. Good week? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, today we're going to be talking about Alien Sex Fiend, a band uh, which you worked very closely with for an extended period of time. Yeah. So, um, tell us how and when you were introduced to Alien Sex Fiend. Well, in 1983, uh, we went to Birmingham, uh, Tin Can Club, uh, as a film with two cameras. Uh, it was our first time. But we worked with it, uh, two cameras. No time. We went up on the roof before the gig, and uh, we went up with a, a camera to film them James Horrocks was there from Cherry Red and... Uh, so is that how you introduced to um, Alien Sex Fiend? Was it through Cherry Red? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and James ignored the machine. He came up with the title of the, of the video. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. And Ignore the Machine became their biggest single? Oh, yeah, I would say so. I would say so. I don't think they ever had anything that was bigger than that. And when you were down at this show in Birmingham, um, what were you recording? Was it a promo video or was it a show? It was a live, yeah. A live Hello. show. With our two cameras. We'd uh, only taken it on the road uh, the first day. Oh, right. You know, it was our first thing. Right, so you were just getting getting comfortable with the new setup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it a good first show to have with two cameras? It was a good show. It was a good show. You know, before you went down to uh, record Alien Sex Fiend, were you familiar with them? Have you heard any of their music before this? We'd heard uh, Ignore the Machine. We'd been sent a copy by uh, Cherry Bird. We'd heard, uh, but we hadn't learned an awful lot about them. And were you pleasantly surprised? We were always seeing things that were remarkable to us. This was another one. Was it quite early days in their careers when you had this first show? With I them? think it was, uh, I would say they'd been going about a year or more. They actually began roughly the same time as Jetty Sounds came together then. Yeah, 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 yeah. In 1986, Cherry Bread decided to pay for uh, two promos, booking me and it, his drummer. Right. It had gone. And there was only three of them. But uh, we made it work. So how did you make that work then? Uh, you uh, have to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any reason why there was that three-year period of time between... The first I don't recording? know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, did Alien Sex Fiend ever kind of come down and play at um, uh, the Clubfoot or anything like that? Did you no, ever... no, they didn't. So besides these recordings, you never really bumped into them on the circuit? No, no, not, not usual. A couple of months later, at Strathclyde University, uh, we uh, had uh, the Turnpike Cruiser. He was playing uh, with Alien Sex V. Uh, it was a, just a gift to us. Um, Rass was a drummer. I did see him having a look at him and he was obviously really taken with him and he came to me and asked me if i said do what you want do what you want so rats came and asked you whether he could take no uh, uh nick Fien came and asked me uh asked you if he could yeah borrow rats to, well he, to play the it, 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 take him out of the band oh really oh yeah oh so that was rats commitment then yeah one or yeah. the other yeah and that's why we started uh, doing a bit more with them. Right, that was the catalyst. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, obviously yeah. you were quite good friends with rats. Uh, 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 yes. Yeah, so you had that direct link now. No, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I'm with you. Because you did a lot of work together during that period of time, didn't you, from 1986? Yeah, we did. We went, um, in 87, we went to the Manchester International. Three months ago, it uh, left the band, joined up with Ellen Sex Fiend, and it now could play it all. It, it really did make a difference. It was a good addition to the band. It was his favourite band. Wow. So yeah. A dream, a dream came true for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. The day after, we went to a hotel in Manchester um, and filmed Ignore the Machine. 
we filmed it all around the park and there was a great window. It was a great window in this hotel room. It looked apart. So it was this really stunning window. Yeah. In this nice hotel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you thought that would be a good backdrop. And with that being their biggest sin single, was that quite a good seller, that promo? I assume so. A few days after, uh, Liverpool Grafton Rooms, Wellington did another show. Uh, about another month, there was the Irish Centre in Birmingham. Fucking hell, we're kind of, you know. We said, have you thought about doing another? We can do a second video. I said, all right, all right. We, we did edit, uh, finished. We started on overdose. It was full of little things. He went to Cardiff and filmed uh, Wish I Was a Dog. There was that, and there was R.I.P. Rats was playing uh, the part. It was a, a good double whammy of uh, really fucking uh, alien sex fiend at its heart. I mean, you were fond of them because they had that edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And rats. And why rats in particular? It was good. It was, it good. was good. So, tell us about the Bonho promo. Uh, well, Bonho was... Uh, it had been shot. It was the Charlie Records. Uh, they didn't like it. They didn't like it, and so they threw it back at us. They still paid us. Anyway, he got it all in the promo. Bloody hell, it didn't have any other sex fiend, didn't it? It was magnificent. So that was a happy mistake then? Yes. Because that uh, promo was intended for someone else? Initially. Yes. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what song did, so oh, they put their song Bong Ho to that? Yeah. Bong Ho. And what was it initially intended for then? I don't know. But, uh, uh, yeah. Was it for a band or a company or? It was a... Cherry, uh, Charlie Records. Charlie, oh, so it was for a band. And, and that, that was the last body of work that you made with, with Alien Sets Fiend, wasn't it? Uh, yes. There was a, a bit of time before 94. Uh, the, they were doing Inferno. They'd split with the Raps after uh, he, he toured America with them twice, I think. Japan once. Marilyn Manson and Slipknot. Uh, were two idols. It didn't work, you know. I imagine that that's why it's kind of a bit of a mixed message, then, isn't it? You know, the fact it was loved by these massive stars, but for one reason or another, Alien Sex Fiend in itself didn't become also a massive star. Well, yeah, but they didn't have the major label like Barney Manson slipped on. They just didn't have that back in the no, day. No, no, no. Two completely different worlds as well. Yeah, isn't it? it is. It is. In 94, the Inferno mixes were... That was another one that was a bit of a mixed message because... Yeah. Cut an edge game at the time that should have been successful. Yeah. On paper, it should have been anyway. I know, I know. And um, uh, all the work they did was not gone to anything. It was a shame. They tipped down. Do you feel like it's it was their their ending and their career was quite anticlimactic considering their beginnings? <sighs> well, yeah. 